Good evening, everyone. I uh, was going to leave my uh, remarks out, and then my Corvette unlocked at home um, in the garage. But I didn't have a Corvette. I don't have a garage. Welcome, and thanks, everyone, for coming out and enjoying us. Uh, celebrating the uh, end of the 2022 racing season at Canada Land of Legends Speedway, Land of Legends Raceway. It's, uh, it's been my pleasure for five years to, to uh, promote what I think is one of the best and most premier racetracks in the Northeast. And that's not because of what we do, it's because of the show that you guys put on every week. We have the best racers and one of the best classes, a series of classes that, that grace any of the tracks in the Northeast. Our fans are lucky, and uh, I, I find myself lucky to be able to uh, enjoy watching from a front row seat every week. So, just want to give you a little brief update of what things happened over the course of the year, where we're heading for, for next year. Uh, it is going to be the 70th anniversary of racing at Canandaigua Speedway. And uh, we are going to be highlighting a lot of that through the course of the year. You'll see a lot of memor memorabilia stuff. We've got some bigger purses, bigger prizes, uh, a lot of focus on what I think is the most important thing, and that's you guys. Uh, there's five classes we race there. I made a decision we're not going to bring in any classes that don't already race at the track uh, in 2023. So it's going to be only big blocks, sportsmen, hobby stocks, street stocks, and the 305 sprints. You know, let's focus on the people that put the show on and our fans appreciate uh, and I, you know, certainly there are a lot of, there are a lot of good groups that, that are out there, uh, but uh, in the 70th year we really need to focus on what we do best, and that's put on the show for our fans. Uh, we're going to have three weekends off. Uh, July 1st for weekly racing will be off. We are racing July 3rd with the Super Dirt Series and the CRSA Sprints. Uh, that is a special. Uh, we'll be off for Fair Week and we'll be off the Watkins Glen weekend. We'll run, race Summerfest uh, during that August week with uh, Super Dirt Series again and uh, the Sportsman, uh, the first Sportsman Series race for the Fall Series, for the Championship Series uh, for the Northeast Dirt Sportsman. I keep saying it, we're gonna be uh, getting grandstands. Well, the fair board has finally come through. The grandstands are being scheduled. Uh, this week we should hear what the date is. They're being installed in March, replacing the grandstand section from uh, the VIP tower, the concession tower. We did spend a little money this last year and redid the pit grandstands. So we got those back open. We'll probably spend a little bit more money this year and updating some of the boards and, and the other ones that are, that are out there. Grandstands are not cheap, and uh, a not-for-profit fair board has is, is, uh, done a good job of investing a little over $100,000 in a new set of grandstands. Uh, so we got, if you see a, a, a fair board member, be sure to thank them. They, they, they recognize how important, how important racing is to both them and the Canandaigua community. Uh, we're going to be adding a VIP tower down in turn one. I bought a, an old press box that we're putting down there so we have a little more space for our sponsors. Uh, and that's, pro that's a problem, which is a good problem to have, is uh, we keep selling out all of our sponsor space because sponsors keep flowing in. And uh, Tana keeps coming to me and says, well, where am I going to put them? we got a rain out. Where am I going to put them? Well, we have to find more place to put them. So it's, uh, you know, if we build it, they will come. So then... Uh, we have some new equipment that come in. We just picked up a new ambulance yesterday. We're working on a couple of other fresh pieces that are that'll be here uh, to help with the with the building off of race nights. Uh, I just completed a two-year contract extension with the fair board, so we'll be here through 2024. An extension option for 2025. Uh, Summer fast will return. We'll have Summer Fast back here. The, the, it'll be the third night of the, uh, of the three race Super Dirt Series Summer uh, Spectacular. It'll go uh, Brewerton, Fulton, and Weedsport uh, with a 60 lap feature uh, on that Wednesday night before uh, Watkins Glen weekend. We have the new Legends classes continuing. I, I was very, very promised, you know, with seeing a lot of new faces coming out and, and getting in cars. And I, and I know people have bought more cars to get in that class. You know, we have to have a future for the sport, and without getting the opportunity to, to do that and get good lap times and uh, good, lap, good seat time, uh, that's, that's to be important, uh, especially with Paradise closing up. You know, there's not a lot of places for, you know, rookie people to, uh, to get their feet wet in the sport. Uh, I've increased the modified start money. Modifieds will now start at paying at 250 to start. I know the, the, the cost of uh, racing keeps going up. 
Um, and and the, the most important thing is making sure we have plenty of cars. And uh, the one thing I can pride ourselves on during the course of 2022, we were one of the few tracks that did not dip in car count all year long. We, we did a great job with it. We only had one rain out, but all year long, we, we sustained well over our averages uh, with car counts. Two, uh, 22, 23, 24 every week in the mods, where a lot of tracks start out at 22, 23, 24 and dip to 16, 17. There was a few tracks that uh, their sportsmen dipped down to 10, 12. Uh, one of the last races down in the Southern Tier had finished with five this season. Parts were a trouble. Fuel is expensive, and, and of course it's a, expensive to sustain racing for that long. Uh, so we, we're, we're pleased to be able to do that. We have a couple of races they'll be doing with bigger purses. Uh, we'll start out the beginning of the season with a, with a 3,000 to win modified purse. Well, we'll come back in uh, June with the Scapo Special, 4,000 to win. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that as we go along. Uh, but the Scapo special, uh, it's very fitting, and uh, I may yell Scapo a few times that night. Uh, street stocks have been moved up to 500 to win. So one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the uh, classes that I did not uh, start up at 500 to win in the last few years, and we're working our way up to uh, make that, you know, they, they put on a premier show every week, and, and uh, that winner is uh, going to get 500 to win now. The, uh, we eliminated the Full Thunder Frenzy weekend. Uh, but we moved those two shows, the Top Gun and the Hobby Stocks, to the Friday night of the Harris Memorial Weekend. We're going to focus again on, on our cars that come in, and uh, I know that's going to be a spectacular show. The uh, Top Gun uh, shootout uh, with the Empire Street Stock Series uh, helping to sponsor that, 1500 to win, and uh, lap money and, and uh, 40 laps on a Friday night. Just before we uh, have the big modified show the next night should be pretty good. We've also adjusted the Sportsman Series event a little bit. That's going to be just a two-day show where you're going to race on Fridays and Friday qualify and Saturday uh, feature. Uh, and those, those, we've, we've outlined that, and that's going to continue to grow, and we're going to see bigger, bigger car counts. And, uh, of course, it, it's an exciting class to watch, so it's always fun to know that you know, we, went, we went nine weeks in a row with a different winner. That doesn't happen in a lot of tracks in a lot of places, and uh, that just is a testament of the, not only the, the depth of our field, uh, but the uh, the challenge it is to win it, to win a race at Canadagua. The Harris Memorial again will be a two-day event. We will still have the Harris Memorial on that Saturday. It'll still be the one-day show, and uh, it'll still pay a thousand dollars to start and ten thousand to win. So we, it will be a uh, continued growing. Uh, Forty-seven cars last year. You know, it just shows that there's plenty of modifieds, and, and uh, we were put at a, a hell of a hell of a show that uh, not only the, the the invaders did, but the locals put on for the fans. CRSA will be here three times, including with the Super Dirt Series on July 3rd. Uh, again, we're CRSA sanctioned, uh, so we are working with them to uh, to make sure that they're going to have a challenge series of those three nights, uh, sponsored by Dispatch Brewery and uh, there'll be a, a little mini-series inside of, the, of their, their major series. We lost two Giants this year. We know we started out beginning of the season just as we started with Don Romeo passing, and then uh, right after the season ended, uh, we lost Mike Scapo. Uh, they were been long-term stalwarts at, here at, at Canadagua, and uh, they're definitely going to be very missed. Uh, I had the pleasure of going down and uh, seeing Don's sister the other day and picking up uh, a large number of his photos, uh, negatives and stuff I'll be going through. He's got photos back into the, the late, from the late 80s to now, uh, all in negatives. So I'm, I, if I see something that, that, that you might be interested in, uh, we'll be sharing those out. Uh, Don's art and talent is uh, important. Um, and I didn't want that just sitting in a, in a closet someplace, so I, I made a deal with uh, Mrs. Mrs. Ms. Romeo for that to happen. Uh, I'll be talking more about Mike a little bit more. <sighs> Weekly ticket pricing. I've seen people post out there that's going up. Nope, didn't go up. Not raising the prices. The economy is tough enough on people and uh, we're going to try to do everything to keep the, those purses going up. We're working hard to get more sponsors to help keep that going. Um, but the uh, pit prices stay the same. The uh, weekly prices stay the same. General admission stay the same. Kids are still free. And most importantly, Land of Legends TV will still be free, 100% free. And that's continuing to grow. And that's based on sponsors and based on the shows we're putting on, based on the great crew at Land of Legends TV and uh, our whole entire staff. 
We have people still chasing us down here in the middle of winter looking to get space on Land Legends TV. Uh, we have some more things we're, we're, we're discussing about that, and I'm looking forward to making some more big announcements in the next few weeks about uh, Land Legends TV as it continues to grow. Make sure you download our app, share our app. We're one of the few, few tracks in the country that the app is very, very important, and we use it heavily to, to get communication out to, to both our fans and our racers. And uh, you get your points there. You can get the push notifications when we rain out. Uh, that app has been a very hefty tool and also, again, highly sought by sponsors. I want to recognize our safety crew, our uh, track officials, the PR team, Land Legends TV crew, concessions people that are here, uh, the food trucks, uh, Tana, my wife, my family that, that help every week. Uh, we have a couple of uh, young interns, uh, McKenna and CJ. We've got a lot of people that, that make this, that help make this track go around, and uh, I can't do it without them. It's just, I, I'm happy to, to be in, in, the, in the front, taking the bullets and, and doing the best we can to, uh, to put on a show, but without them being, being successful at each and every one of their jobs, we don't have it. And uh, that goes back to the same. Each, I, I truly value each and every one of you racers um, who invest your money, your time, your efforts, your weekends, your nights in the, in the garage on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and what you're doing between heat races to put on a show for the fans. And uh, by being able to do that, that's how we're able to put purses up there that you can run for. And uh, hopefully we'll keep making that uh, one of the premier places to, to race in uh, 2023, the 70th anniversary of Canandaigua Speedway and Land of Legends Raceway. And that, I'm going to cut it a little short. We're going to, we're going to graciously appreciate all of our, our champions and our award winners tonight. And then I'll uh, wrap up a little bit at the end. But thank you. Uh, we want to, uh, Paul mentioned our, our division sponsors, uh, you know, all of our sponsors, but our division sponsors help us put on the show each and every weekend. So there are some sponsors that are here tonight that we would like to recognize for their support this season. Uh, I want to start with a new sponsor to Land of Legends Raceway this year that helped us put on the Gerald Hairs Memorial Sportsman Challenge. Uh, I want to uh, thank the folks from Sterling Lubricants. I know that uh, they're here tonight. So Steve, we've got a nice uh, award for you to take home and thank you very much for your support. How about a nice hand for Sterling Lubricants? <clears throat> Next up is our division sponsor. They were new with us this year to pick up the New Legend Sportsman Division, uh, and they're coming back next year to sponsor our Sprint Car Division, Mighty Boba, out of Canadagua. How about a nice hand for them? <laughs> next up is our Hobby Stock Division sponsor, which was voted in the top three for Best of the Finger Lakes in both home siding and home building, Lloyd's Contracting. How about a nice hand for Brian Lloyd? <clears throat> I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but damn, do the street stocks put on a good show every week, and they're sponsored by Eldridge and Sons Scrap Recycling. Jamie and, Jamie and Justin, thank you guys for your support. Speaking of putting on good shows, our Mike M. Hoff Motorsports 305 Sprint Car Division, always putting on a great show for our fans. want to thank Mike M. Hoff from Mike M. Hoff Motorsports for sponsoring our sprint cars. <clears throat> Eldon Payne and all the good folks from the Speed Connection on 5 and 20 in Canadagua. They sponsor our sportsman division. How about a nice hand? Eldon, come on up. Or Kennedy. Sorry, Kennedy. And I know Mike's not here tonight, but uh, certainly uh, we, we can't thank enough the official soft drink sponsor of the Land of Legends, Geneva Club Beverage and Pepsi, sponsoring our Big Block Modifieds right here out of Geneva. How about a nice hand for Geneva Club Beverage? <clears throat> uh, 
All right, let's hand out some hardware. Let's get right to it. Uh, we are going to start with our Rookie of the Year awards for 2022, and we'll kick it off with our Big Block Modified Rookie of the Year. Zach Payne, Big Block Modified Rookie. In the Proctor Enterprises, Page Material Management, MP Delivery, 7C, Zach Payne will win heat race number two. We got the car set up good for this track. Uh, we made a quick time decision uh, before we went out. This thing's on rails. I think now it just comes down to the driver being more consistent and getting more laps. And we will soon, oh, Johnston got the jersey barrier there in the corner and new race leader at the line. By 31 thousandths of a second, it's Zach Payne, a mo big block modified rookie this year in that 7Z. Please welcome 2022 Pepsi Big Block Modified Rookie of the Year, Zach Payne. Next up is our Speed Connection Sportsman Rookie of the Year. And let's just say this young man, well, he did it all this year. What was that moment where you went to dad and said, I, I think I want to get behind the wheel? Probably the first time I went to practice at Paradise, I hopped in the car. And right then I was like, this is what I want to do. That's a fun one. The rookie sensation out of Geneva, New York, looking for his first heat race win of his career. And it looks like it might just come one week after his dad got the first big block modified win of his career. How about it for Nick Brew? First heat win of 2022. Comfort in there. Gone. Oh, look out, contact here on the front straightaway. And we're gonna stack them up to turn number one. And one car is upside down. Nick Brew got upside down. What is it like when you're upside down and rolling? Do you know what's going on? Do you have any idea? No, you got no idea when you're upside down. All you know that you're rolling is hope you land on your feet. Okay, well, Please welcome 2022 Speed Connection Sportsman Rookie of the Year, Nick Root. Next up, uh, two awards that, you know, we're going to give away a lot of hardware tonight, but I, I think these next two awards are, you know, some of the most coveted because these are voted on by the staff of Land of Legends Raceway from the staff that sees what drivers do both on the track and, and even more importantly, off the track. Uh, so we're going to start. We have two sportsmanship awards tonight, and here's our first one. To the season it's been for Kane Bristol so far after two straight seasons of what seems like it's been bad luck for him and his race team. What a strong start to the season. They were quick last week with a second place effort and now they have walked the dog here in heat race number three. Kane Bristol wins. Final trip down the back straightaway goes Kane Bristol. The Flower City Glass, Linny and Lou's Ice Cream, number 31. Mark Bristol strike up the band. Kane Bristol's going back to victory lane. Really struggled with these coils. And uh, when we went to the bar, from the bar car to the coils, it just was a new learning curve and it put us back so far, but I think we're starting to get there. Oh, I hope so. It was nasty last couple of years, you know, one worse than the next and it was always waiting for something bad to happen and this year we got some consistency and built off that momentum and
Congratulations to 2022 Sportsmanship Award winner, Kane Bristol. So ladies and gentlemen, as the 305 Sprints make their way off of turn number four, we've got a very, very special tribute here for Jesse Whipple. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Whipple has taken the outside of the front row and we have left the pole position empty for the missing man formation in memory of Jason's dad, Jesse. Folks, how about a nice hand and wave off the sprint cars here as they show you the missing man formation in memory of Jesse Whipple. But Jason Whipple out front in the 38. Can we add another heat race winner to the series this year? Yes, we will. Jason Whipple will win heat race number three. That's now 17 different heat race winners in 31 heats in 2022. Congratulations to 2022 Sportsmanship Award winner, Jason Whipple. So we go from two awards that drivers, I'm sure, are, are very honored to get to uh, the, the award that probably nobody wants to get at the banquet. Next up is our Hard Luck Award. White flag in the air. One more time around. Peter Britton, 21A. Still got about a five car. Like Oh, Peter Britton just broke here off of turn number two. White flag still in the air off of turn, or through turn three and four, and off of turn four, Tim Fuller just got himself a victory here tonight. Pat Ward will finish second. Wow. A pitch it to the low side and turns three and four. What a run as he lets it drift up to the middle. Oh, and Peter Britton's got a problem, your race leader. Oh my goodness! Britton in the 21A, is it the right rear tire? There was some sparks coming up underneath oh. the car. Oh my goodness. Definitely has a flat right rear. Yep. And just turned this race on top of its head. Wow. So. And it was two Saturday nights ago that Britton led the race, and in the final lap coming out of turn two, the car came out of gear. Oh, and no. Tim Fuller motored by to take the win. Please welcome 2022 Hard Luck Award winner, Batman, Peter Britton. Uh, <laughs> I, wa I want you to know that the time it took to put that together, I felt really, really bad. I felt really bad. I really did. All right. Next up is a uh, special award that, that Paul likes to offer here at the banquet. Uh, it's our Land of Legends Raceway Spirit of Racing Award. Mike Payne, Zach Payne, uh, Chris Gittins, they have all do a lot to help me out. And check that out. A nice hug from Mike Payne. Those guys park next to each other each and every week. And when he mentioned quick time shocks, say he's talking about Mike and Zach Payne there. The 2022 Spirit of Racing Award awarded this year to a member of our racing community who literally has decades of experience here at the Land of Legends. In recent years, He's taken to his son's racing efforts in the MP delivery Proctor Enterprises 7Z. But what Mike Payne contributes to this sport even more so is his willingness to help others and to be there when a team needs a part, they need help with setup or with his uh, shock adjusting business as well. Please welcome 2022 Spirit of Racing Award winner, Mike. Pain. 
All right, next up is our Best Appearing Car Award winners, and we have two of those this year. Back up front, your race leader coming to checkers this time. Tony Velez out of Gorham, New York, the Proctor Enterprises. 21V will win heat race number one. Into turns three and four for the final time. Coming to the Roosters, checkered flag. Canadagua, put your hands together for Kennedy Payne. First heat race win of her young race career here at the Land of Legends. Great job for her. Land of Legends Raceway congratulates Kennedy Payne and Wicked Tees on 2022 Best Appearing Car. Land of Legends Raceway congratulates Tony Velez and Image X Graphics for 2022 Best Appearing Car. It was a toss up between him and Peter. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our division awards. We're gonna start with the Lloyd's Contracting Hobby Stocks. And before we start there, uh, just wanted to review. So our point fund this year is uh, awarded to drivers that made at least 80% of our 2022 shows. And impressively, 66 drivers across our five divisions will take home point fund awards in 2022. So let's start it off with the hobby stocks and finishing in seventh place with 10 rare, excuse me, 10 top 10s out of 12 starts, the driver of the 17A, John Almakinder. Next up. Man, you don't want to miss him out on the racetrack. Three wins this year, seven top fives, ten top tens for the driver of the 25B, Mr. Smooth, Mark Minutlo. <laughs> Finishing fifth in the point standings this year, five wins, ten top fives, ten top tens for the driver of the 18, Wayne Ellison. Finishing fourth in the point standings, driving car number 90 with two wins, 10 top fives and 11 top tens, Nate Peckham. And now to our top three, our defending track champion from 2021 ended the season with two wins, 10 top fives and 14 top tens out of his 14 starts. It is Justin Eldridge. The bounty has been claimed for the first time in 2022. Justin Eldridge wins. Eldridge and Son Scrap Recycling, Big Mike's Auto Repair, 25J, 2021 Hobby Stock Track Champion, going back to victory lane. Justin Eldridge will win in the Hobby Stocks. Justin Eldridge, your Hobby Stock feature winner, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome the driver of the Eldridge and Son Scrap 25J, Justin Eldridge. So, I guess I should have explained. So, drivers in the top three, we put together a little, uh, a little something for you. So, uh, second place in the standings this year, he got two wins on his own, uh, ten top fives, fifteen top tens out of fifteen starts. The driver of the 57J, Tyler Burnell.
Who's going to Casbah Victory Lane? Who's going to have bragging rights in the shop all week long? Bubba sends it in there into turn number four, but Tyler Burnell will get his first win of the season. Car 57 Junior, the Scott French Peck Electric, Phelps Cement Products, number 57 to the lane. Tyler Burnell wins over Jimmy Grant. Please welcome the driver of the Phelps Cement Products, 57 Junior, Tyler Burnell. And on to our track champion. Didn't get as many wins as his son did this year. <clears throat> One win, 14 top fives, 15 top tens out of 15 starts for your 2022 track champion of the Lloyds Contracting Hobby Stocks, Frank Bubba Burnell. Manulo closed the gap just a little bit off of turn two, but I think he's a little bit too far behind to try to get up there to the bumper. Bubba Burnell off of turn number four. He's going to get the win here tonight, his first of 2022. Burnell gets the win. This is a place to be still, and if you win a hobby stock race, this is where you want to do it because we got the best. You know, we got Wayne, Eldridge, you know, Scrap, these guys. This is, this is where it's at, man. Checkered flag out here for Bubba Burnell. Best crews I've ever had in my life. Just the, the guys, the old timers, I mean the young guys, the new guys, Loop. Please welcome Lloyd's Contracting 2022 Hobby Stock Track Champion, Frank Bubba Burnell. Well, congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Tell me, uh, tell me about your season here. Uh, one win, bring home uh, another track championship. But uh, I know racing with your son these last couple years has got to mean quite a bit to you. Uh, it's it's more than I can ever explain to anybody. Anybody that races with their kid, you got Vic and his son, and uh, everybody else, Justin, you know, and Jamie. It's a pretty cool deal. But then when the kids get cocky, you want to pop in the mouth here and there, you know. Especially my kid, he don't shut up. Um, but he's a good kid down in the heart, but hopefully we get him a little calmed down at his young age and he'll be a little better driver than he is now and he can be get a championship again, but I don't think he can beat me. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, I think we might have to make a water bet here. <laughs> well, tell, tell me about all the folks that, that help you out. I know you've got a great crew. You were talking about it there in the video. Oh, I got like, I got to thank Donnie. Yeah, he's like our, our, our pick guy. He does everything for us, and he's going through some tough time with his family now. Uh, so I wish him you know, prayers to him and his family. Uh, he's been to the shop this winter because he had a lot of things going on, but like Donnie, Jess, uh, Nate, Raymond, these guys, just, they do whatever they need to do. And we, like, we may not have a lot of money. It looks like we do because our team does nothing half ass. I mean, we, we do it all the way or we ain't going to do it. So, I mean, I got a great team, great sponsors, FLX Home Solutions, Phelps Cement Products, Justin Bear, all these guys there. I mean, they give us whatever we need, you know, work, time off from work, money, whatever, you know, whatever we need. And it's just, we got a great team. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, there's Bubba Burnell, your hobby stock track champion. So Bubba's the first to carry him through. We've done uh, new championship trophies this year. We've got one of them that's lit up here already. So those will uh, be nice for the mantle. Next up, sticking with the full fenders, we'll bring in the Eldridge and Sun Scrap Recycling Street Stocks. And thank you very much, Jamie, for your support. They're back with us again next season. Lloyd's contracting back with the Hobby Stocks next year as well. And we'll start off in 14th place in the point standings with one top 10 finish. He's everybody's favorite. Bundy, come on up, my friend. <laughs> Mo 
Moving on to position number 10 with two top 10 finishes to his credit, driver of the number 63, Mike Fellows. Finishing in ninth place with three top five finishes, seven top tens, and he starred in the Auto Value Parts Stores commercial. Driver of the 55P, Parker Smith. Finishing eighth in the points with one victory, seven top fives and 11 top tens. Driver of the 99, Adam Depew. Finishing seventh in the standings with 11 top 10 finishes, driver of the 122, Chris B.A. <laughs> Finishing sixth in the standings, did, uh, drove two different cars throughout the season to do it with four top five finishes and 10 top 10 finishes, driver of the 57J, Nick Dandino. Oh, the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, yeah, baby. Mullen, get a good shot of that. Oh, yeah. And I, to think, I left my dollar bills over on the table. She... Boy, Jungle Jim, he'll go get a loaf of bread, won't he? <laughs> All right, now to our top five. I'll tell you what, this driver right here, he put some impressive runs together at the end of the season. I'm excited to see what he'll do next year. Two top fives, nine top tens. Driver of the number nine, Axel Jensen. I said all those nice things and he's not here. Some bitch. All right. Well, I know this guy's here. He always likes putting on a show. <laughs> Seven top five finishes. 12 top tens for the driver of the 25B, Mr. Smooth, Mark Minutlo. Smooth, 2024, let's go. All right, now to our top three. This guy put some good runs together at the end of the season as well. Seven top five finishes, 12 top tens for the driver of the 5C, Rick Kriego. This class is hard, this track is hard. Everybody that wins spends hours on end in the shop. Races are won in the shop. You know, you gotta work on your car and uh, you know, we do that each and every week. So everybody wants to win, but you just gotta work at it, keep working. And, you know, things will come your way, and, you know, eventually, hopefully. Record flag in the air, Rick Frigo gonna bring it home here in the Corby's Collision 5C. He will come home with heat race win number one of 2022. Johnson wants to get low. He almost drove into the grass on the back straightaway. Bundy ain't doing a thing wrong there, but Johnson wanted the inside lane. And now here comes Welch and here comes Rick Carrigo. Top three all together here with six to go. Please welcome the flying firefighter in the 5C, Rick. Frigo. Finishing second in the standings, and this was a pretty cool story, and I, I kind of had it a little factually wrong on the night he won his first feature. He won in an amateur stock back in 1986. Now, the show of hands, how many folks were going to the Land of Legends in 1986? Okay, all right, very good. I think I went that year. I was born that year. So, 
But this was a great story. This was a great story. Four wins, 11 top fives, 14 top tens, and he kept Mike Welch honest all season long. How about a nice hand for Carl Johnson? Johnson went a little higher in turn four that time, and Dandino closes the gap. Half a mile to go. Carl Johnson, will he get his first candidate will win, or will Dandino get his second? Final trip into turns three and four. Carl Johnson in the 87, the Heart of Gold Veterinary Care ride. They're gonna be side by side. Canadagua, put your hands together. We got a first time winner here at Canadagua. Carl Johnson wins. Boy, there's a lot of stout competition out here. This class is really, really a tough class. Looking for his third feature win of the season. The first driver to three wins here in 2022. The Heart of Gold Veterinary Care, Zimmerman Brothers Fertilizer, number 87, Carl Johnson, third feature win of the season here at the Land of Legends. Well, Carl Johnson is going to take a CRS chassis to victory lane in the Les White Memorial Top Gun Shootout. Please welcome the driver of the Heart of Gold Veterinary Care, 87, Carl Johnson. And a good story about the first feature that he got this year, Doug Elkins wanted to interview him before the races, and Carl said, no, I don't want to interview until I win a race. He won the race that night, so he got to do his interview with Doug. Now to our track champion, who's done it again in the double zero. Here's the stats. Never finished outside of the top ten. Never finished outside of the top five. Four wins along the way for your 2022 Eldridge and Sons Scrap Street Stock Track Champion, Mike Welch. side eyeball to eyeball into turn number three welch on the bottom pancrazio up top off of turn four mike welch is going to victory lane final trip into turns three and four Kriego gets by johnson for second but out front make it 84 career wins for mike welch in the double zero another feature win Looking for a championship in a few weeks, Mike Welch will get it done here tonight at the Land of Legends. The Rockstar Energy Drink double zero going back to victory lane, career win number 86. There's just a lot of people I gotta thank, you know what I mean? And really, this championship goes to George Casquiel, to build my car. George built this one, I didn't know that. No, he didn't build this one, but George, George had my back with everything. And Maynard, my crew guy, he busts his rear end on his car, and this goes to his mom too, who passed away over the winter. And just please welcome 2022 Eldridge and Sons Scrap Street Stock Track Champion Mike Welch. Who let the dogs I was paid well to play that song. <laughs> Mike, tell me about uh, this season. Uh, you've really taken uh, to this car that you've added to the team like a duck to water, man. Tell me about it. Really? Like a duck to water? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we had to step up our game this year, so we bought a, new, uh, a newer close racing chassis car from Glenn Wright and our car had a lot of history, so I had to make sure that I made the car proud, I guess. And we just had a good year. He had a really good year. Uh, never outside of the top 10 or the top five. That's, that's not easy to do in a class where the competition level is very high. Absolutely. Any of them guys can win any night. And everybody has really stepped it up. They're on, they're on their game. And uh, they, that class is definitely a lot different than it used to be. I remember you telling me, I think it was last year, that your last car would be a blue car, and you got me thinking, is he talking about that R word sometime soon? But I can't imagine that's anytime soon after a season like this. 
No, I'm getting bald and fat, but I'm still got it going on, so <laughs> we'll keep going. <laughs> That was the perfect answer. That was per Tell us uh, about the folks that help you out. You mentioned some of them there in the video, but I, I know it takes a, a lot of good folks to make it happen. Uh, Rockstar Energy Drink, you know, Gen or Geneva Club Beverage really helped me out a lot. Uh, TLC Trips, Bud's Apple Pie Moonshine, Smith Brothers Drywall, Dennis Cummings Trucking, uh, Jamie and Bambi over here, Eldridge Scrap, that got my back every week. Um, Auto Value. Rid of it, you know, Canada Eagle Window Cleaners, and uh, Glenn right now are here with Team 15 and my crew, Maynard, and uh, especially Tana, she puts up with my crap all summer long, and uh, here we are. Well, I'll tell you, you, know, you can see, I mean, I don't see it because I'm over in the tower, but looking at all the video clips that we get on a race night, you guys have a hell of a lot of fun over there on that row that you guys park in. It's a great bunch of guys, the Eldridges and Mark and Blaine and us guys and that whole, that whole group through there. We just, we're all good friends and we have a blast. Congratulations. Thank you. Folks, how about it for Mike Welch? Next, we'll move on to the Mike M. Hoff Motorsports 305 Sprint Cars. We are going to be honoring the top 10 in the standings here tonight. We'll start in 10th place with three top 10 finishes this year for the driver of the 14, James Layton. Finishing ninth in the standings with his first career win, five top fives and eight top tens. Driver of the 17E, Ethan Gray. <laughs> Finishing eighth, got himself a win this year as well. Two top five, seven top ten finishes for the driver of the number two, Randy Years. Finishing in position number seven, driving car number 77, two top fives, nine top tens. That is Matt Rotz. <laughs> Next up, sixth in the standings, got his first career 305 win at Canandaigua this year, three top fives and 11 top tens for the driver of the 18 C, Dan Cron. And now to our top five, finishing fifth in the standings this year. Ten top five finishes, very consistent season. Twelve top tens for the driver of the 38, Jason Whipple. <laughs> finishing fourth in the standings this year. One win this season, eight top fives, 12 top ten finishes for the driver of the 48A, Alicia Bay. And now to our top three, our third place finisher this season had seven top five finishes, 14 top tens, and the best beard in the pit area, Trevor Years. They'll go wing to wing into turn three for the final time. Who's it gonna be? Cron or Years into three and four? Years all the way along the tires and he'll stick in turn four to get the win. Oh, what a finish. Yeah, rear view mirror, he'd love what he's seeing. Those guys battling for second, but Years is making a run. He'll tuck into line, here to three and four. Oh, I think he picked up some dirty air there. That car looked like it pushed on him bad in turn number four. Uh, I'm just super happy that we put it on the podium tonight. Um, been trying really hard to get some good finishes, and I think we're finally starting to get this new car figured out. I'm just excited. We got two brand new Panthers sitting on the podium. So shout out to Sean Donna for putting together an amazing car for us, both me and Kyle. I think, uh, I think they're going to be something to be messed with here in a few weeks when we get them finished dialed in. Please welcome the driver of the Arnold's Tree Service, 13T, Trevor Years.
finishing second in the point standings with three wins to his credit, 10 top fives, 12 top tens, and a dedicated fan club who watches from Atlanta, Georgia every Saturday night. Driver the 53, Bobby Perro. Go up on the wing. All right, guys, let's let him hear it. Bobby Perro tonight's Mike Hamhoff 305 Sprint Car A main winner. For the second time in 2022, BP53 is going to the lane. So, with the ATL crew holding their beers high in the air, the Fletcher Racing number 53 into turns three and four for the final time. BP53, third win of 2022. Harrow wins over Ruggles. Please welcome the driver of the Tommy Fletcher Racing number 53, BP53, Bobby Perro. Been watching that guy do that since I was a little tyke at Paradise Speedway, man. Good stuff. And to our track champion this season, who ended the year with five wins, 12 top fives, 12 top tens. He had so much bad luck to start the season this year that the run he went on from midsummer on to win this championship was absolutely incredible. Our track champion for the Mike Emhoff Motorsports 305 Sprint Cars, the 48 junior of Daryl Ruggles. He's got some championships along the way, but seven years later, Daryl Ruggles will win on opening night here at the Land of Legends. Ruggles World of Auto Body 48 Jr. The bounty has been claimed. Daryl Ruggles back to victory lane. And you're gonna ride on board here with Ruggles in the 48 Jr. Look at Ruggles trying to work the bottom lane. Now, what a shot. You can watch him work the wheel. Daryl Ruggles, the Ruggles World of Auto Body and Graphics. Sterling Lubricants, Eldridge and Sun Scrap Recycling, 48 Junior, Ruggles goes to victory lane. Pierce is second. Tre The motorized madman does it again. 47 career wins here at Canadagua. Please welcome 2022 Mike M. Hoff Motorsports 305 Sprint Car Track Champion, the motorized madman, Daryl Ruggles. Daryl couldn't be here with us tonight, but Alicia is going to accept on his behalf. Folks, put your hands together one more time for Daryl Ruggles, our 2022 track champion. Alicia, Florida, right? I, I saw he was down there with Kathy Scapo this week, so send all of our best to him. Congratulations. All right, let's move on to the Speed Connection Sportsman Division, and, well, let's just say... Quite a few drivers picked up Point of Fun Awards this year from the sportsmen. We'll start off in position number 20, driving car 36B, Brandon Grover. Brandon Grover in the 36B. <laughs> Finishing in 18th this season with one top five and one top 10, driver the 7J, JT Sparing. Our best appearing car this year in 17th place with a top five and a top 10 to his credit, driver of the 21V, Tony Velez. <laughs> Finishing 16th, yeah, Tony, you've got a, yep, come on up and see Paul. Anybody that's, uh, anybody's name that we call, you've got uh, something to grab from Paul here. 
Finishing 16th in the standings, driving car number 28, Mark Potter. Mark Potter was one of the drivers in the running for Rookie of the Year this season. They had a great year this year. Finishing 14th in car number 9 with a top 10 finish to his credit this year, Tim Baker. Tim Baker. Finishing 13th in the standings, two top fives, two top 10 finishes for the driver of the 51, Tim Laffler. How you doing, Justin? Very good. <laughs> he sent the crew guy, didn't he? Okay, fair enough. Finishing 12th in the standings, four top five finishes, seven top tens. Was in the running for his first career win earlier this year. Driver of the 35, Nick Cooper. <laughs> Finishing 11th in the standings, aboard car number 30 with six top 10 finishes in his rookie year, Nicholas Root. <laughs> now to our top 10. This driver picked up two wins this season to go along with three top fives and ten top tens. Driver of the 113, Frank Guerry Jr. <laughs> Finishing ninth in the standings, he won on opening night with five top fives and nine top tens. Driver of the 10, Carl Comfort. King Carl. <laughs> Finishing eighth in the standings. Got his first career win during Summer Fast. Live on Dirt Vision this year with one win, six top fives, and nine top tens. The 132 of Dalton Martin. Just because of this, Dalton, you are my son's new favorite driver. <laughs> Next up, finishing seventh in the standings. He also picked up our sportsmanship award, got back on the win column this year, five top fives, 14 top tens, Kane Bristol. Finishing sixth in the point standing, said when he came back to racing with the sportsman, he wanted to get a win so that he could get a victory lane picture with his daughter. He got two of them, five top fives, two wins, 12 top tens, Justin Henderson. Now to our top five. This driver also picked up two big wins this year. Eight top fives, 15 top tens. For the driver of the 25G, Nick Guerry. We're not, we're not, we're not gonna call it retirement. He's just uh, not racing for a while, right? We're going to take a little break, do a little life, and uh, take a little time off, do a little camping with the family. Um, Mercedes is back here. We're getting married next July. Uh, we have a 16th month, month old at home. Sorry, this July. This July, yep, <laughs> yep. This July. We have a 16th month old at home, and uh, she's growing up. We're going to do the sport thing and uh, with Sophia, our other daughter, and do some camping with family, but, you know, I have racers in the family, so we'll still be at the track. I work for racers. I have a lot of racing friends. Um, everybody that's in here, I've, I've grown up at the racetrack. Every friend I've ever had has been from the racetrack, whether it be a racer, a crew guy, a friend of a racer. So I appreciate all the time spent with everyone here. We'll still be at the track, just not behind the wheel for now. It was pretty important to get those two wins this year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was for sure. We had, uh, had a rough end of the year uh, last year when we ended up wrecking that car at Weedsport and uh, I contemplated taking some time off then and uh, I didn't want to go out like that. So we came back, had a good season, picked up some wins and had a good year. Well, congratulations and to uh, make up for the little date faux pas there, you can go ahead and take this up to uh, the, the lady in the back there.
Hey folks, put your hands together for Nick Guerry. It's a very, very great representative of not only his division, but uh, our track as a whole. Finishing fourth in the point standing, seven top fives, 12 top tens for the driver of the seven, the king of the back row gang, Paul Guerry, the G-Man. Finishing third in the point standings, he got three wins this year, 10 top fives and 14 top tens. Driver of the 64, Tyler Corcoran. The Halmar International Dirt Track Digest TV, number 64, first win of the season for Tyler Corcoran. Through three and four, Tyler Corcoran gonna pick up the win here in the Speed Connection Sportsman. Sec Please welcome the driver of the Halmar International 64, Tyler Corcoran. Tyler couldn't be here with us tonight. So we'll move on to our second place finisher this season. Three wins to his credit, 10 top fives and 16 top tens out of 17 races for Gibbs McQuarrie. All the folks at Mojo's are standing up on their bar stools, cheering on the 12G, the Tradition Automotive Group, Mojo's Tavern, racing promotion monthly. Number 12G, Gibbs back. Larry nails down his first one of 2022. On his way to win number two of 2022, Matt Query wins at Land of Legends. He's coming out of the car, Matt Query. Huge win for Gibbs tonight. Please welcome the driver of the Tradition Automotive Group 12G, Gibbs Matt Wary. Gibbs, I know it's not biggie, but it's as close as I can get to on royalty free. <laughs> All right, our track champion. If you had, this is again, the, our track champion in the sportsman. You know, this is just like uh, Daryl's run in the 305 sprint cars. If you had looked at the beginning part of Zach Sabatka's season, you would have said, boy, I don't know, it's, uh, championship's going to be tough. But man, did they turn it on in the summertime. He got one win, and it was a crucial win right at the end of the year as we got ready to make the championship run. One win, seven top fives, 15 top tens. First track title at Canadagua, Zach Sabaka. In a season where they've been fast, they've been in the top five in the top 10, but they hadn't broken through to get a victory. Well, that ends tonight. Zach Sabaka will win the Speed Connection Sportsman. Sabaka will win heat race number two. Potter gonna bring it home in three. 
Justin Henderson's gonna win the race and Zach Savaka is gonna win the 2022 title. In thrilling fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2022 Dirt Car Sportsman Champ at Land Legends Raceway, Zach Sabatka. Please welcome your Speed Connection Sportsman 2022 Track Champion, Zach Sabatka. Well, Zach, what was the secret? It got to about July, and I remember looking at the stat sheet and saying, man, Zach hasn't gotten a win. I mean, we had nine different winners at one point, but I said, man, Zach hasn't got a win, and, and a week or two later, there you were in victory lane. Uh, yeah, all the, all the competition here uh, this past year, uh, it, it, was, it was very tough. Uh, all the sportsman cars, uh, every, everybody that started that race had a shot at winning it, so... Uh, even to get to that one win for me, that was that was hard enough to do. Um, but we just uh, ended up getting our shop fully rebuilt and all put back together. So um, that just gave us a place to work on the car every night, um, and it definitely helped us there racing weekly. Yeah, I mean, it's it, we we don't want to forget that part either. You guys had the the shop fire over the winter. Uh, I think it was uh, right around March. Yeah, uh, February. February um, yeah. So pretty much everybody that helped us get that back together. Um, we didn't really know when that first happened that we were going to be racing this year. Um, one of the first people that came to us was uh, Nick Reary. Um He helped us with Bicknell and raffled off the car. And um, I'd like to say that he was one of the main reasons what kept us going and got us back going again. So. Um, we can't thank him enough, um, and just everybody else has helped us out get that back together. Um, and then, obviously, all my sponsors, they, they helped us with that part of it, and just everybody that's here with us. Championship night, you had a long way to come from the back of the pack, um, but, man, that car was so good on championship night, you drove right up through. Yeah, Justin, uh, he, he got the win on me there. Um, I was, I was trying to catch him, the I, I don't really remember where I started, but the car was perfect that night. Um, but Justin, he, I couldn't get by him, and he had a good race. So um, it would have been nice to get that second win there. But, um, yeah, you got to take top fives when you can get them. Who would you like to thank here tonight uh, on this uh, monumental effort here this year? Uh, my main sponsor, Steve, with uh, Australian Lubricants and Champion Oil and Maximum Oil. Um, and then all the rest of my sponsors, uh, Stoneberg Construction, um, Mohawk Northeast, 87 Speed, Donath Motorworks, um, Predator Race Cars, Northern Colton Blast, um, Achmec, Paragon Masonry. Um, just, and then obviously uh, everybody that helped us out with the shop, uh, like we said, Nick and uh, yeah, it's <laughs> everybody that's here. Well, great job this year, folks. How about a nice hand for Zach Sabaka, our 2022 <laughs> Speed Connection Sportsman Track Champion. And Zach, for 2023, just so you know, we are going to want that stunt show with the pit bike on the front stretch if you're open to it. That was a good idea, Doug. All right, let's move on. Oh, actually, well, we are moving on, but I'd like to bring Paul up, who has got a uh, special presentation uh, for our crew chief and team of the year. This year's 2022 uh, Crew Chief and Team of the Year uh, is uh, no less than uh, the uh, Crew Chief and uh, uh, team that just bounced off the back uh, during after that fire and uh, was able to uh, put on a stellar year in the sportsman class, one of the toughest sportsman classes in the Northeast where with so many different winners and so many different opportunities, it took being on the game every night to be the winner. So this year's uh, Crew Chief of the Year is Mike Zabaka.
All right, our last division for awards here tonight is the Pepsi Big Block Modifieds. Finishing in 20th position, driving car number 88, Dave Allen. Dave Allen in car number 88. And again, all of these drivers making at least 80% of our 2022 schedule to be eligible for point fun. Finishing 19th in car number 17, Marcus Dinkins. Marcus Dinkins in the 17. <laughs> Finishing 18th this season, driving car 29NY out of Horseheads, Greg Byrosh. Greg Byrosh. Finishing 17th in the standings in car number 27D, Daniel Doc Johnson. <laughs> Finishing 16th in the standings, driving car number 19W, Justin Wright. Justin Wright in the 19W. <laughs> Finishing 15th in the standings out of Western New York in the 33J, Robbie Johnston. Robbie Johnston. 14th in the standings, driving car number seven, one top 10 finish, Troy Sparing in his rookie year. Driving car number 22G, finishing 13th in the standings, two top 10 finishes, Gilzilla, Giltag Jr. Not, uh, not stealing any table signs this year, Gil? Oh, the night is young. The night is young. <laughs> Finishing 12th in the standings, four top 10 finishes this year for the 21P of Derek Paziadlo. This driver picked up a win on our non-points night. Finishing 11th in the standings, two top five, six top tens, Pat Ward in car 42P. And now to our top 10. Driving car number 11J with one top five, three top 10 finishes, James Sweeting in the 11J. <laughs> Finishing ninth in the standings with one feature win, as well as a win in the Gerald Hares Memorial, 10 top fives, 11 top tens, Eric Rudolph in car number 25. One of our Rookie of the Year contenders with three top, top, top five finishes, nine top ten finishes, and some laps led as well, driver of the 70A, Alex Payne. Three top five finishes, nine top ten finishes for our modified rookie of the year, Zach Payne in the 7Z. <laughs> Finishing sixth in the standings, five top fives, 14 top tens for the driver of the 39, Kyle Coffey. <laughs> this next driver comes from table one. With one, with, with one feature win, four top fives and 11 top tens, the 34 of Kevin Root. <laughs> Table one. <laughs> Finishing fourth in the standings with two feature wins, seven top fives and 12 top tens, driver of the number 19, Tim Fuller. Tim Fuller in the 19. And now we get to our top three. Finishing third, three feature wins on the season, five top fives and 13 top tens for the all-time leader in big block modified feature wins, A.J. Slideways, Alan Johnson. MCS Farm and Feed, 14J, the streak gets extended, Alan Johnson wins at Canadagua.
Look at Slideways up to the third spot and going after second and he might go for the race lead. Three wide for the top spot into turn three. AJ Slideways down to the bottom. 126 career wins here at Canandaigua and he'll lead on lap number seven. We're seeing the Alan Johnson of old here tonight. Is it gonna be AJ Slideways or T-Bone? T-Bone all the way upstairs and it's not gonna work. Alan Johnson wins at the Land of Legends. Oh, what a finish. Does winning ever get old? Uh, yeah, it gets more exciting, you know, because uh, you never know what's gonna be your last one. <laughs> Please welcome the driver of the 14J, AJ Slideways, Alan Johnson. Alan Johnson, hell yeah. Three wins this year, nice job guys. Finishing second in the standings with one feature win, 12 top fives and 13 top tens and the hard luck award for 2022. <laughs> the driver of the 21A, Pepsi Pete, Peter Britton. The Pepsi Rider Racing VA Custom Headers 21A out of Brisbane, Queensland, Australia via Weedsport, New York. The Batman, Peter Britton, goes to victory lane. His first of the season. Play, you know, thanks for. Yeah, everybody. I get a lot of support a lot of the time, so um, thanks for all the cheers, and um, yeah, you know, great to be here. What? Please welcome the driver of the 21A from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, Batman, Peter Britton. Just on a side note, Peter, thank you very much for what you do for our fans. I was looking through the video clips to put that together, and at the, uh, when you had your car on display behind the grandstands, I saw you signing autographs, and I'm looking through and looking at these clips and things, and some lady walked up to you and made you sign her shoe. Do you remember that? <laughs> she had a checkered flag shoe, and she peeled it right off, and without batting an eye, he just said, oh, okay, sure, and passed it back. <laughs> He'll do anything to help the fans. I love it. All right, to our track champion, and it's so damn nice to have him in the house here tonight. Uh, we talked to him via FaceTime last year here at the banquet. Three wins, 13 top fives, 15 top tens. That's right, never once finishing out of the top ten. Driver of the number three, and now a two-time Land of Legends track champion, Justin Harris. Congratulations to all those guys getting the championship. I know it's not easy to do, and uh, cherish every one you get. And uh, like I said, I wish I was there at the banquet with you guys, but uh, thank God for technology, and I'm able to at least stream in live and, and kind of hopefully get that feel. We're just going to go out. We're just just race our race, and, and that's all you can do. And um, you know, despite what happens, we had a very successful year here. It'd be awesome to just close it out with a championship. working the top side. Harris will back it into turn number three. He gets three for three into turn number three. Oh, baby, what a move. But tonight, 
There's no denying it. T-Bone off of turn number four will win here at the Land of Legends. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for him. T-Bone, Justin Hares. T-Bone, two in a row here at Canadagua. Canadagua, but he's got last year's defending track champion, Justin Hares, going to the top side. White flag is out here from Canadagua. It's Johnson and Hares. Half a mile to go. Hares takes it upstairs. And now they're three wide with T-Bone. Alex Payne and Daniel Johnson. Oh my goodness. I don't know where to look. Hares is picking them up and putting them down though right now. He's one points race away from championship night here at the Land of Legends. What a huge win. T-Bone will win at the Land of Legends. But bringing it home in ninth. No, make it eighth. Gerald Hares, your baby boy, has done it again. T-Bone, Justin Hares has collected the 2022 Pepsi Big Block Modified title. Please welcome the two-time and defending 2022 Pepsi Big Block Modified track champion, T-Bone, Justin Hares. Nice job. Do you see yourself on there? Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Man, I, uh, I don't know really, honestly, what question to ask. I feel like we've had so many conversations similar to this over the last couple of years, but um, I guess I'll start with how does this one feel different than last year? Well, I'm, I'm here at the banquet, so that's, uh, that's one difference. Um, you know, it was 20 years of uh, racing before I went from my uh, sportsman championship to my, my first big block one, so it was pretty cool. And, um, you know, they're hard to get, and uh, so it's, it's just wild to, to, to come here and all these people and um, great fans, so it's uh, – it's it's pretty cool to pretty cool to be up here. I know that it's been a lot of hard work. Uh, I remember talking to you last year after a couple wins, and you said, "Man, we went four years without a win, and now here you are, two seasons in a row with a couple wins, three wins this year." Um, I know you say every time you're in victory lane, man, you just cherish them because you don't know when the next one's coming. Well, that's for sure. Kind of, you know, Alan said it best. You know, he's won, I think, 46, 47 years in a row, and. I went four years without winning one and probably had 20 second place finishes, but they're, they're so hard to get. So you, you do cherish every, every victory you get because, you know, sooner or later that is your last, you know, your last victory. So we, uh, you know, we keep plugging away and um, every year just try to keep up and, you know, keep your program up to date. Speaking of your program, every time I walk by your guys' hauler, everybody's having a great time. But at the same time, everybody is so focused, and they're, they are there for business on Saturday nights. Tell me about all the great folks that have helped you along the way this season. Well, I got a, uh, a cheat sheet um, for all that stuff. So if you don't mind, we got a few minutes, right? Yeah. You can take the microphone. All right, I'm, I'm going back behind this thing here. <laughs> so... Uh, Obviously, you know, as everybody knows here, you know, without a great crew, um, your your team is not, not very good. So uh, I just want to start thank my crew, uh, Todd Kirkwood. Um, you know, he's at the shop every morning, you know, before I even think about getting up. Um, he, 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 for some reason, he can't sleep at night. But uh, so, Todd, thank you very much. Um, Jeff Niskus, Bill Bench, Jim Davies. Jimmy Sheehan, our cook, he uh, is there every Saturday night making sure everybody eats, not only our crew, but I think he feeds probably 10 crews. Um, <laughs> Greg Kirkwood, Cowboy Troy Smith, Charlie Green, thank, thank you all you guys for uh, all you do. Um, next, uh, obviously sponsors, you know, not only my sponsors, but everybody that uh, sponsors you know different cars in the, in the pits because obviously without you guys we wouldn't be able to uh, you know put our car in the track every week. Um, Phelps Cement Products, Jeff Jolly Masonry, Honeyway Auto Parts, uh, Doug Doolin, his son Dougie, um, 
happy to get them two championships in a row. Um, CX Electric, uh, Start Imagining, FLX Home Solutions, Keep Safe Storage, um, JH Coatings, and uh, Sterling Lubricants, Steve Sterling, thank you very much for uh, all your great product sponsors and uh, all the oil. Uh, product sponsors, Sterling Lubricants, Bicknell Racing Products, Integra Racing Shocks, Fastline Performance Shocks, Finger Lakes Machine, Pilot Graphic Design, and uh, S-Rock Cement. Um, you know, finally, uh, I, I got to thank, you know, Paul Cole, staff at Land of Legends for giving us uh, a place to race each and every Saturday night. Um, and Leg Land of Legends TV, you know, we got fans from, at least I get, you know, you know, tweets and all that stuff from people from as far as South Carolina, Arizona, um, Virginia, uh, West Virginia, it's, it's pretty amazing the fan base I've been able to grow over the last few years just by having our, our racing streamed on TV. And um, I can't thank Land of Legends TV, Paul Cole, everybody for putting that on. It's, it's pretty cool, um, able to show our sport on a nationwide um, TV like that. Um, next, uh, I don't want to take up too much time here, but I can probably go all night here, but uh, you know, my, I got to thank uh, everybody, uh, my family, uh, my mom, she, um, she's in Florida, and uh, get choked up a little bit here. <laughs> He's supposed to keep me from not doing that. Um, <laughs> Uh, my dad, obviously, he was a big part of my racing team. And uh, my uh, my two kids, Jonathan and Emma. Um, Emma couldn't be here tonight. She was uh, homesick, so she's uh, pretty upset about that. But um, I got to thank them. They're my two biggest fans. And... Uh, my uh, my brother, Bear, Jared, um, Casey, Claire, my sister, Jill, my brother-in-law, Vic. Um, thank you, all you guys. And um, last, my wife, Melanie, she uh, puts up, obviously, with a lot of uh, late nights at the shop. Um, as all you guys obviously know, um, coming home, <laughs> dinner's cold, kids are in bed, and uh, you're kind of, <laughs> thinking how this all works but obviously you know you get home and you got a great wife that you know supports kind of what you do so thank you to her um takes the kids to sports practices and all that stuff we're, we're working at the shop so i gotta thank her and uh i think that that's all i got like i said i i hate to get emotional but i'm an emotional guy so uh i uh I, like i said i can't thank everybody enough here for uh supporting me and kind of I got a lot of fans and I, I really appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Can I say something? He did it all for them, hey. Good job. Folks, one more time. How about it for Justin Harris? All right, next up, I'm going to bring Paul up to present our Employee of the Year. Sorry. Before I do that, I want to uh, just wrap up a couple other things before I go to the Employee of the Year. Um, hopefully it's easier than last year's. But uh, Land of Legends TV and the clips you saw tonight are the things that you need to grab as a racer to improve your team. We'll be starting posting those tomorrow. The bank will be running in, in its entirety on, on probably Monday. Grab those videos. This, this sport's expensive. And without sponsors, you're going to have a tough time staying sustainable and competitive. The better sponsors you have, the better equipment you have. The more places you can get to. 
Land of Legends TV was designed as a tool to not only help the racetrack get exposed, but more importantly, to get the racing exposed and get you guys be known stars outside of the half mile in Canadagua. Land of Legends TV is here to make you stars and make your advertisers get exposure. Advertisers are creeping down looking to find places to, to spend their advertising money. Give them the opportunity to do that. Show them what it is. Take that video. Take the videos. We have a, we have a, we have a, 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 a promotional video. Use that promotional video. Go to your sponsors. Go to people you haven't talked to before. Tell them what it does. This year, we, went, we, we averaged almost 2,000 devices a week watching a show. That's 2,000 devices, 2,000 households, 2,000 locations. That extrapolates out to almost 8,000 people watching from home. We have bars that are running it. They got 80, 120 people in there. People calling us and texting us and, and reaching out to us from all over the country. Shoot, the World of Outlaw guys sit in the holler and, and T-Max watching T-Bone race. And all the guys are coming over there and say, geez, this is pretty nice, pretty nice uh, racing got going on. But that's the exposure that the free TV is doing for you. It's getting you the opportunity to sell that spot on the side of your car. Get more money into your sponsorship program. When you do that, you're going to be more successful. And wherever track you can go to that does that and helps you do that, they're going to help you be more successful too. Not only did, our, did that number grow in, in, our, in our viewership, our attendance also grew almost 20%. So it's not killing racing. You, you, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it all over the place. Oh, you're not selling more hot dogs. We're selling more advertising. We're selling more, we're selling more tickets. We're getting more people here. You notice we had 20 deep drivers in the big block class, which I'll argue is one of the toughest big block tracks in the state, if not in the country. Yet, they came here every week to run with the best. A couple of those guys could easily go someplace else and cherry pick and probably make a little bit more money on a purse because they're winning or they get another victory flag. But it means something all the more special when you win Canadagua. And it means more to your sponsors when they get seen. And it means more to your fans. And you're growing more fans, and Justin just said it. That's what, that's what racetracks are designed for. They're designed for fans, advertisers, and racers. Any one of those three things are missing, we're not successful. And that's the, that's the mission from that, when I started five years ago, and we're going to carry on into the future, is to get you more exposure and get your name out more. There's, we, have the, we have some of the best racers in the country on this track that nobody knows. I want to keep changing that. I want household names out of all the, every person in this room. And that's why we're sticking with our classes this year. We're sticking with, the, with what works. And we're making sure our fans keep growing. So if you have questions about that, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Reach out to Steven. Use these videos. Share them. Let your fans across the country know. Tell your friends to share it with their friends. Racing is free to watch every Saturday night on Land Legends TV. It doesn't cost a cent. And when they get hooked on you, they're going to get hooked on and want to be invested in you. And when they're invested in you, you're going to have the reason to keep coming back. When you keep coming back, we get more fans to the gates, we can raise the purses. All those things cycle. They go hand in hand. It's not one thing. Any one of those things breaks down, it won't work. So I want you to make sure you take, care, take advantage of that. Don't lose sight of how important that is. And I realize not everybody's an advertiser. Not everybody's a salesperson. Find somebody that is. Get them to help you. Because you're all, I don't want you guys to miss the boat. I want you to get all be competitive. I love watching three and four wide. We had a six wide on the front stretch this year. And I didn't think I, I my, my insurance sphincter puckered so hard when I saw that happening. And nobody touched. That's how professional even the middle of the pack can be. Our big blocks. I watch guys spin around and, and nobody touch. So you guys should congratulate yourselves on, on, on giving us something that, that people want to watch. When we put that show on, it, the numbers go up. It's not just the fact that we got pretty graphics and we have a great producer and a great announcer. It's the fact that you guys put on a great show and that's what we're going to keep trying to do. That leads me to the Employee of the Year Awards so we can wrap this up. Uh, one more housekeeping note, if, the if, if all the champions will come up afterwards, we've got to take some photos for the press. Uh, so please don't just run off, uh, come right up afterwards so we don't have to hold everybody up. Uh, 
But the best part about going to the racetrack every week is seeing your family and friends. Bad night at the racetrack for me is when somebody doesn't go home or somebody gets hurt. Everything else is subjective. The track might not be any good. We may have made a bad call on, on a technical issue. You know, any number of things could happen. Those suck. I don't like to deal with them. But it's part of being a, a racetrack operator. But for me, the most important thing is to make sure our safety crew, our tow truck crew, our whole team does everything you can to make sure you go home safe to your family. That, and when, when those things don't happen, when we have a wreck or an accident, that to me is a bad night of racing. You know, I, I, could, I could, you know, there was the night we had the bad dust storm this year and I had to give some refunds and, and cancel racing. That sucked. I didn't like it at all. But that still wasn't a bad race for racing because nobody went home hurt. There's two people at the track every week that uh, take the brunt of what happens at the racetrack. And they're just stuck in the middle of uh, uh, their position. But they have, the, they, have, they have one of the best positions because they get to see and talk to each and every one of you every night. They're the first smiling face and they're also the person you're going to scream at about my position. Where am I starting here? Why I know, what, what, where is my handicap? Where, where's, where's the lineup? Uh, why is somebody parked in my, in my holler space? They, they get to be the professional complaint window. And uh, the best part about it is, is they're, they're, they're both two of the biggest hearted people that we have in racing at Canadagua. So my employees of the year for 2023-2 are Mike Scapo. and Tommy Curtis. Because as, as all racing goes, it's a team. And, uh, you know, I, when, I, when I first put them together, it just kind of felt like I was watching the old version of the Odd Couple, Felix and Max Unger. <laughs> you know, uh, consummate professionals, both work hard to make sure you have a great time at the track. and. Uh, want to make sure that everybody has a smile on their face and the best part about it is they carried smiles with them everywhere they went and uh, they do and I'm so happy that uh, Tommy's here tonight and I can give them word in person and I'm just as equally heartbroken that uh, Michael's not here tonight uh, but I know that how important that each and every one of you were to him and I know he spent the time to pick up the phone and call you sometimes when you're like oh boy Scott was calling again and uh, you know it's going to be a great conversation. Um, and I kind of wish I had a few more of those. But uh, we we're, we're look forward to celebrating him more at the Scapo special. And uh, we're going to have a great season. And uh, we're going to make sure we give uh, all, the, all the due uh, accolades he gets at that time. And uh, I want to reserve some more of my, my uh, thoughts for that. So appreciate it. Kathy, I know you're watching from uh, Florida. And uh, we love you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, I know the uh, Scapo special is on June 4th and uh, the, having the Celebration of Life for him the next day. So if you got marked that in your calendars, uh, Mike's a special person and uh, we look forward to uh, saying our farewells then. But uh, thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. We know a lot of you have families and, and uh, want you to enjoy your weekends and uh, hopefully the snow stays away a little bit longer except for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Alan, I know you want to go snowmobiling. And... Uh, <laughs> We'll uh, appreciate seeing you all uh, th very soon here. Uh, April uh, 15th, or eight, April 16th, I think, is our first practice. April 23rd, we'll start racing, and uh, we'll get on with uh, putting on the best show in, in, north of the, in Northeast. Thank you. Final lap here for the mighty Boba. New legend sportsman, and it's Greenlee George down the back straightaway for the final time. The Scotties half fast bumper service. Scott Stopa attorney, number 26, Greenlee George wins the Mighty Boba. New legend sportsman division here tonight. And Dandino just 
can't get the same run off the bottom that Johnson gets off the top lane. Does Dandino have anything for him here? White flag coming out this time. Johnson went a little higher in turn four that time, and Dandino closes the gap. Half a mile to go. Carl Johnson, will he get his first candidate will win, or will Dandino get his second? Final trip into turns three and four. Carl Johnson in the 87, the Heart of Gold Veterinary Care ride. They're going to be side by side. Canadagua, put your hands together. We got a first time winner here at Canadagua. Carl Johnson wins. Really getting comfy in that car. The Carl Myers Enterprises, number pool, 32C. Coming to checkers this time off of turn four. New Legend Sports been sponsored by Mighty Boba. Give it to Casey Coffee. Silk will come out this time. Welch is not done battling yet either though. Working the bottom lane. He stayed right true to the bottom here for the second half of this race, but it's Brad Steinruck Jr. out front trying to get his first street stock win here at Canadagua. Carl Johnson's gonna be right there with him. Johnson, will he send it in the corner? No, he's gonna tuck into line. And Brad Steinruck Jr., he's gonna pick up the win, his first here at the Land of Legends. Fuller's now up to second with two to go. Fuller, who was last week's feature winner, chasing down Kevin Root. Pairs battling with Coffee for third, but the race is for the lead, coming to the white silk this time. Half a mile to go for Kevin Root. He has won races in Sportsman, he's won a championship in Sportsman. He's won the coveted Gerald Harris Memorial. But here tonight, on June 11th, 2022, Canadagua puts your hands together for a first time winner. Kevin Root gets the win. So if you got any fingernails left to chew, start chewing them now, get on the edge of your seat. We're about to have a great finish here. As second and third is quickly closing in on your race leader. For the top two, they're going for their first ever 305 win here at Canadagua. Trevor Years already has his first. He's looking for number two. And Gray has closed the gap by half, but they're coming to the white. Oh, now Whipple got it back going. Whipple was in trouble in the 38, but it, what it did do was make Crod change his line just a little bit. White flag is out. And here goes Ethan Gray down to the bottom, trying to get a battle off of turn number two. He's about three car lengths behind, now make it four. Dan Cron into turns three and four. Land of Legends race, here comes Gray to the bottom, and Ethan Gray with a slide jump. First career win here at the Land of Legends. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Land of Legends, put your hands together for a first time winner in thrilling fashion. I cannot believe what I just saw. I cannot believe that. Lights are on. Welty immediately going to go to work here, trying to win in his first event here at the Land of Legends. But Lichty's got the run off of turn two. That 57 has been so, so, so good here tonight. And now he's really getting to show it here in the feature. Oh, Welty right there. They're side by side coming to the white flag. Oh, setting up for a good finish here. Now, Welty hasn't been that as good as Lichty in one and two, but down here in three and four, this is what will decide the winner here. Lichty's going to sail it into the corner. Welty sails it in there as well. Door to door off turn four. Give the win to Justin Lichty. Hey, how about the new legend sportsman putting in a good finish for us? Final trip down the back straightaway and into turns three and four. Randy Years is going to pick up the win here tonight in the Mike M. Hoff Motorsports 305 Sprint Cars.
Popsicle sticks will go in the air this time for the 132 of Dalton Martin. One mile to go. A mile separates him between his first sportsman win here at the Land of Legends. Working down the back straightaway into turns three and four. And Dalton Martin, as he has seen before here at Canandaigua, he will see the white flag first. Working into turns one and two for the final time. Now he's gonna protect the low lane. Gives up a car length to Guerry, but he gains it off of the corner. The DeGeorge Properties, MHL Performance, Nashville's Catering, number 132. Canandaigua, put your hands together for a first time winner. <laughs> The D train gets it done here at the Land of Legends. Query across. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it. A first career win at the Land of Legends Raceway for Dalton Martin in car number 132. <laughs> Coming to the white flag is Bear Grover. Trying to pick up his first career win. Here at the land of legend, oh, he almost, almost got out of shape in turn two. Gathers it back in. I'm sure he doesn't know he's half a track ahead, but that was a close call there for Bear. Bear Grover, Canadagua, how about it for a first time winner here across the line. Bear Grover gets his first here at the land of legends. And if Dan Cron had a rear view mirror, he'd love what he's seeing. Those guys battling for second, but years is making a run. He'll tuck into line here at a three and four. Oh, I think he picked up some dirty air there. That car looked like it pushed on him bad in turn number four and gave Cron a little bit of an advantage here at the white flag. Years trying to put one more run at it together. Dan Cron looking for his first career win through three and four. Land of Legends, put your hands together for a first time winner. Cron goes in the history books at Canadagua.